Happy Cancer season, everybody. Happy summer solstice if you're in the northern hemisphere like I am. Happy winter solstice if you're one of my Australian or just anybody from the southern hemisphere. I don't look at analytics a lot, so I don't know where everyone is, but I know I have quite a few folks down under. Sorry, that was... <laughs> All right, you guys, we got a lot of energy going on this season. It's eclipse season now. So typically, people think like 10 to, 10 to 14 days before eclipses start, you're going to start feeling that energy build up. I've definitely been feeling it. Whew. She coming. She coming true. Um, but it starts officially like with the first uh, total sol solar eclipse on July 2nd. And then we have um, a partial lunar eclipse on the 16th of July. So July really is the month where all the things go down. However, right now is a great time to be starting when we're less triggered by these energies, when we're less emotional, when we're less, I mean, now, fuck. Saying less emotional during cancer season is on a fucking spectrum, let's be real. And tomorrow is a fucking, the moon moves into Pisces. So, if you've already been crying, to, <laughs> today I have. So, um, you know, that's just normal and we're gonna feel our emotions really deeply during this season. That's normie. But, um, you know, right now, if you can start kind of archetyping the responses that you want then you're going to have a little bit of a, a cutting edge for navigating this time because it's going to be hard. But if you know what you want to do going into it, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. I'm going to do things just a little bit differently this month. Um, well, so it's been a breaker since I've done one of these. I skipped Gemini season. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, I'm hopefully making up for that with some other little gifts that... I'm going to start having for this tier and yeah, things are shifting in a gradual process and uh, thank you to everybody who's on this journey with me. We'll get, we all get what's coming to us. You know what I'm saying? So, so the way I'm going to structure this one is really, we're going to, we're going to focus on events. We're going to focus on the first, the new moon. So the cancer new moon. Um, on the second, and that's also the full solar eclipse. The next card that I'm going to pull is going to be from Mercury Retrograde, which is 7-7. Seven, seven. Hello. Hi, numerology, if y'all are into that. Um, and then the next day, Chiron is retrograde, which for me is a big deal because Chiron's influence has been weighing heavily in my like client relationships and in my own work personally this year. So, um, it also probably does not help that my Chiron is in Cancer, which feels like, oh shit, like this, if there's ever the year to deal with it, it's like when Chiron retrogrades in your Cancer season, right? Um, in the season that, you know, whatever your sign is in. So then we're going to talk about the lunar eclipse and the full moon on the 16th. Um, and then I think we'll pull, if, if I don't run out of time, I'll pull cards for the sun, moon, and rising sign. And if we don't have enough time in the video, um, I might just do an additional pull, take picture, and um, leave some instructions for how to apply that to your own sun, moon, and rising sign, like based on where your houses are and stuff like that. All right, so let's pull these cards. But before I go, let us intend that whatever comes through will be in service of all of ours. All of our in here who will watch this and everyone that we impact and come into contact with, that this will be for all of our highest and best, not just ours. To help us to see our role clearly in the information that comes through. Help us to trust our responses to this information. Help us to be open and accepting that what comes up now is what we must address now. And now let's pull these cards, okay? Oh. 
Damn, this is some energy. Wow. <clears throat> so, we can really kind of talk about the for the beginning of, you know, cancer season in alignment with it's basically this phase of the solstice up until the first eclipse of eclipse season on the second. So what do we need to be focusing on? What's the, the vibe of this moment for us all? And it's the fool. The fool is such a powerful card for me. Like the happiness that comes through with the fool is to me something that, you know, I don't really feel is fully matched again until say uh, the sun um, there's this sense of like real openness and really being led by something greater than yourself. And I have to say, like one of the, the, the more developed and mature esoteric understandings that I've come to like encounter interface with, um, in my practice is this concept that, you know, Becoming the magician is really about understanding how much we're a co-creator of the process. And it's not, it's not about serving our own will. There needs to be something deeper than it. There needs to be a greater connective thread. There needs to be some transcendent height to aim at, this is really what I think the, like, when the spiritual energy of Gemini fully actualizes itself, that's where we get to. We understand that there is a thing, a transcendental thing in our lives that we're meant to spiral around, to, to come into communion with, to aim towards, maybe to never reach. Maybe not in our lifetime, maybe not in our experience, maybe we're never meant to fully embrace it, define it, come into contact with this thing, but simply the, the energy of its presence that being actualized, realized is what Gemini is being called to do because you know, in the evolution, like if you were to think that the, like the Zodiac somewhat represented the evolution of humanity as we know ourselves to be now, or the processes we're going through, Gemini season would have absolutely been the development of the mind, you know, like the, the element that rules it is Mercury. We're going to talk about Mercury going retrograde into its retrograde phase. I'm going to stop policing myself on how to say things. Jesus Christ. It's like such a waste of time. Ooh, a Mercury true <laughs> great vibe, maybe. Anywho, Mercury ruled, you know, Gemini. And for alchemists, like Mercury represents the logical mind and the way things kind of flow and the connectivity of all things. When we start with these dual hemispheres and like a very unintegrated Gemini or an unintegrated person will be fluctuating between their polar opposites without knowing that all of this is who they are and that they're meant to find or connect to or hear the calling of or feel the energetic presence of this thing thing in their own life and it's really only yours it's really only yours but it's it's transcendent to everything else that fights within you and that's supposed to be the thing that we interface with have a personal relationship with you want to call it the highest self you want to call it god you want to call it the universe you want to whatever you know maybe it's the process through which you know consciousness instigates its own evolution you know maybe it's simply the 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 reverb of the process of evolution and we are becoming something new and the